Hello and welcome to season two of Girls Empowered. My name is Naomi and although I miss my co-host dearly, I'm super excited for the new faces and new segments we have in store for you. If you are new to Girls Empowered, welcome. Our show aims to create discussion with young women and for young women living in a patriarchal society. Join us for our roundtable discussion as we discuss hot topics in today's society with new kids on the block, Nani and Vienne. Welcome, Nani and Vian. How are you guys doing today? I'm well, just a little nervous. I'm yeah. good. I feel a little sick, but I'm okay. here. I'm good. So, Nani, what topics do you have for us today? We have three topics to cover today. The first being pop icon Priyanka Chopra. Do you guys know anything about her? Well, she's a woman of color from India, and she made her first debut in 2002 in a movie called The Hero. She's so beautiful. I'm just going to say she that. Is she's beautiful. so pretty. <laughs> um, she's a Bollywood star. She's idolized by all the girls in India. And she was former Miss World from the year 2000. She wanted to go into the STEM career. She wanted to become an engineer. But then she also changed her mind to become a criminal pathologist. But then she ended up winning Miss World at 18. So 18. I think that's pretty dope. That's crazy. Yeah, I know she started out with academics and she, her mother really wanted her to continue with that and go into a career that's like stable. But she was really passionate about acting and film industries, so she did that and her mother like was like hesitant at first because she wants her to make money, but she like continued helping her and she's her manager too, so I find that, find that really awesome. Managers are cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's really admirable of her. Um, she does a lot of work back in her hometown. Yeah. Um, she's with a lot of organizations advocating for education and raising awareness of the conditions there. That's yeah. another thing too. She also uses her social media platform to promote things like education and injustices against women. So I think that's pretty cool too. I know that she's involved with UNICEF. She's been involved with them for about 11 years, and she's participated in events to raise awareness of child abuse and just many issues with children in India and other parts of the Middle East. She's really just slaying her entire <laughs> and she's stardom beautiful. everything. Yeah, for real. Speaking about women in media, let's talk about the documentary My Mic Sounds Nice. My Mic Sounds Nice is a documentary directed by Ava DuVernay. It's about women in hip hop who discuss exploring comments on how hip hop has changed in the art of women in the industry. They give a fresh point of view about their experience inside the industry and the challenges that they face in this really heavily male dominated industry. What do you guys think about the documentary? So one thing I really want to point out that I is pretty obvious is that you know hip hop is a man's world so women are often underrepresented unless they you know they're sexualized yeah mm -hmm. and it's clear that there's a really big lack of female MCs and Definitely. females in hip hop which is crazy because they're so talented and they do you know a lot yeah it's like they make a point in the documentary about how one of the main ways that a woman could get in hip hop or in music videos in general is they have to over-sexualize themselves. They have to submit themselves to like... Fitting a man's image of what a woman should be like yes. in a music video. Yes. That's funny that you say that because I remember in the documentary that um, I think it was for the Grammys, Trina was saying how she could be like the only female in her category and they would just completely take the category down because she was the only woman. So yeah. that just goes to show that women really are underrepresented and that mm. sex sells. Truly. And I think, like, you know, women are just looked at as objects. Like, yes, that's all definitely. it is, is they're just sexual objects for man's mm -hmm. pleasure. You know, they're not there to be heard at all. They're mm -hmm. just there to be looked at. And I think that's bizarre. Like, yeah. a woman could be telling her story. It doesn't matter as long as, you know, you're dressed sexy, you look sexy. What do you guys think of Nicki Minaj? As I know, she was uh, mentioned in the documentary. In the documentary, mm -hmm. they point out, like, they make a checklist of, sort of like a checklist of, of how she, like, 
she's fit into exactly what women would have to do in order to get in the industry. Like she's began her career with extravagant clothing, very colorful, very wild, very out there. And I could see how her style has evolved. And now it's just long black straight hair. She's just more classy, more elegant. And but like she still expresses herself through rap, through hip hop. And like I really like respect that about her. And like she's really good at what she does. That's true. I noticed that in these music videos women would have to like straighten their hair mm -hmm. in order to fit that beauty standard that supposedly attracts men. Mm -hmm. And also in the work industry, women and men would have to straighten their hair in order to look more professional. What do you guys think about that? So I actually read that in the New York Times, the Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel ordered that the American military review its policies on hairstyles popular with black women. So that means like large cornrows, twists, dreadlocks, and that in these regulations, they included the words unkempt and matted. So like, how do you guys feel about that, knowing that the military would have to make these new changes to fit the standard, that the, the ideal that, you know, hair like this isn't professional, it's even if it's like, even if you have like, even if you have to tie it back or something. Yeah, I find it really ridiculous because, yeah, you could easily just tie your hair back or just change it a new style. You don't have to straighten your hair in order to, at least that one reason that I found out that they, have the, they would just have to straighten their hair in order for their helmets to fit. And it's like, they don't have to, it's unnecessary to like, put damage and put heat into a person of color's hair in order to like, do that because like it's yeah it's unnecessary it's not healthy for a hair because too much heat it could like dry up the hair mm -hmm. and make it brittle and break easily so yeah I also think they do like these people that make these rules don't consider the fact that there's so many textures that come with exactly people of color you know their hair it's not just one way you know it's like comes in a variety of shapes and sizes and everything and it's like not as simple for one person mm -hmm. to make all these changes as it is for another person so people of color in general would have to adapt to the standard that people have put onto e us yeah in order to survive this society that you need straight hair to have a job you need straight hair in order to be noticed to be attractive it's so rooted inside of the overall psyche of what beauty is and what professionalism is that so many people, like I've seen like so many interviews of black women that really hate their hair, really think that their hair is like, like That's ugly. That's sad. And yeah, they, they really believe that their hair is ugly. They really be like their, their children's hair is ugly. Women would have their children at three years old having their hair permed. Some would like perm themselves and like, like some children would be super uncomfortable with it, but they still do it anyways because it looks good to them. It's easier to take care of for themselves. Like, it's yeah. not fair and, it's and not the healthy. ideal and the ideal of it looking more professional and like that's the only way you can get a job is if you look a certain type of way. Yeah. yeah. Like I read an article um, about a MBA program in Hampton University, and there's a ban on locks and cornrows, an entire ban on it, and it's like yeah. why they consider it those hairstyles n not business-like and it won't land them enrollment and it's something as simple as your appearance can determine your future and determine whether you can make a steady living or not and I think that's so ridiculous. I don't understand how a, a hairstyle can lead into professionalism like something as simple as like twists or cornrows like how does how is that linked to professionalism like if someone told you guys oh you have to straighten your hair in order to get this job. What would you guys do? Well, I wouldn't well, do it. I mean, yeah, I I wouldn't I'd leave. <laughs> but I'd I think like the reason is because like once an executive sees that your hair is like natural, it's curly, they're gonna think that. Well, one that's like uneducated in this topic is gonna think that oh, you must not take care of your hair. You must not wash it. You must not really put much grooming into it. And they'll think that, oh, so if you don't take care of yourself in that aspect, then you won't really take care of anything else. Like, like even if you have, like, a nice, clean outfit on, like, and you're ready for this interview, you're ready for this job, they'll just take one look at your hair and assume, like, the worst of you and not hire you. 
Speaking of hair, Girls Empowered Youth producer Tati, who is usually behind the scenes, has her own segment called Untangled with Tati. Tati, take it away. Thank you, Naomi. Hey, Nathan Curls. Welcome to Untangled with Tati. Today, I'll be distributing hairstyles to keep you cool for the summer. The grandma flow, the half up, half down, and the high pony style. These hairstyles is not only easy and simple, they're also fun. Let's get started. So today, we're going to start with the half up, half down. So you start with the part. OK, so you put the back in a ponytail. Separate it from the top, then get some water to loosen up the gel that she already had added in her hair. The brush, start brushing it.
We now jump to Daniela, who is bringing us Monica Abrego, a Mexican opera singer who runs a nonprofit organization dedicated to the youth in East Harlem. Welcome to Girls on the Go. My name is Daniela Escamilla. I'm here at Church of the Living Hope with Monica Abrego, the singing teacher at Escuela de Mariachi, Angeles in New York, and the director of Redes. Redes uh, USA is a um, choral program for children from 7 to 17 years old um, here in the tri-state area and um, is part of uh, two of the programs that we have at the Baja Musical Arts Initiative. Our mission is to offer children free musical instruction and um, to offer them values such as um, so solidarity, be able to work in, in um, learn some discipline through music and other values as well. When the opportunity came to me to um, start this organization, uh, it was in 2012. Um, it was through the Foundation in Mexico. Um, and um, I am originally from Tijuana, Mexico, and also I'm a musician, so I know the benefits of music. And of course I said, um, it may, just made sense to me to be able to work with the community and to give back through music. I believe that music is very helpful in the uh, development of any human being. Um, it helps you in many aspects of your life, even though you might not become a professional musician uh, someday, but it helps you just to learn all these uh, wonderful values. Approximately right now, we have around 17 young women uh, that we work with, and um, it's very empowering, and it's and I think it's for me especially. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to to work with with the young women. I was given the opportunity as well when I was young, and I think it's important for us to to support each other. You can always uh, find find us in our webpage, www. Thank you, Monica, for your time. Back to Naomi at the studio. So that is all the time we have for today. Thank you to the crew working behind the scenes, and thank you for joining us here on Girls Empowered. See you next time.